there, it's Saturday, March the 25th, 2022, and this is Teeny, our toilet paper roll bin. And you know, it is getting closer and closer to the finish line, I think. Uh, the, in previous weeks, the toilet roll collapsed under its own weight. It absorbed a lot of the surrounding liquid, and it's in this corner here. And I am hoping that we can put this toilet paper roll to bed, so to speak, uh, soon. Uh, not that it's holding up um, my proceeding with a partial harvest with this bin in a few weeks, but I do, I do want to uh, make sure that, you know, I put the full bin into production and the toilet paper was just kind of a funny gimmick. But it was a carbon source, so uh, here we are. Um, you know, I usually throw sticks and other things into the feeding area, which happens to coincide with where I put the toilet roll. So let me just try to find the toilet roll is in pieces now. So I'm going to go down deep enough with my hands that I can bring up the pieces. Well, that just brought up um, the corn cob. So again, large pieces I tend to store here. So let's see. Oh, here's toilet paper. Uh, still actively there's a worm in a hiding hole there the worms are still active in it it peels apart just like spanakapita at a greek restaurant quite frankly uh yeah the worms are still active in it and as i peel open these layers you can see that they are in it depositing their castings now they can't get into this stuff that's right in the middle. Well, I guess they can if they poke their heads through. But yeah, they are definitely now um, making short work of this. The uh, toilet roll has been um, well infused with the liquid from the surrounding bedding. So it would have lots of microbes through all levels. Uh, and so I have no doubt and you can see that the number of, of castings just attest to the fact that the worms have been in and out of these layers. Uh, it's been less than a week since I was out here last and I sort of shook all this off. So the worms never left. The, well, I fed. I, I, well, maybe I didn't feed last week. I'll have to check. Um, but anyway, I did keep the toilet paper more or less in uh, its own little area. And there's still, there's another little bit there. There is still a little bit uh, left. I guess that's it. So if I pick it up, it's heavy, of course, because of uh, the moisture. But that's the volume. Oh, there's a corn cob in there sneaking in. So that's the volume of the toilet roll. So it's down considerably. So it is disappearing. But... You know, unlike bedding that you might use like, well, even cardboard, uh, but certainly leaves or manure, uh, toilet paper presumably does not come with its own set of bacteria. Now this toilet roll was running around on the bottom of our van, so it did have grunginess on the outside of it. There's a mussel shell. But it didn't have, you know, all the way through those layers. Presumably when they produce toilet paper, it is produced relatively in a clean environment. And so, you know, I think it was very important that the toilet paper get infused with, with uh, the microbes from the surrounding bedding before, uh, before the worms were really going to be able to get into it. And that seems to have happened. And I'm delighted that that, that is the case. Now, the toilet roll went in there um, last uh, fall. La um, last summer actually. That's just egg carton, not toilet roll. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take these big pieces again and I'm gonna put the toilet roll over here, what's left of it, and like I did with, um, with previous feedings, I'm gonna feed on top of it and I've got a little bit of a treat today to entice them. I bought an extra giant uh, can of pumpkin and then I froze it. Now I assume canned pumpkin has already been processed, so the cell walls have already broken, but I froze them in these silicon muffin cups 
and so there's a lot of liquid here and so I'm going to um, remediate the rest of the bin because I know I'm introducing a lot of liquid but I'm also giving the toilet roll uh, residual paper an extra attractive little home for the worms to find. It's not a lot of food for this bin. This bin does have manure in it. So what I'm going to quickly do while you're still with me is I'm going to grab a handful of this um, this shredded leaf material. So these are dried leaves that we actually shred in a food processor and it creates a powder and it's going to be powdery so I'm trying not to breathe it. So I'll just put the bucket down. So by putting this on, and then I'll cover it up quickly, so contain the powder. By putting that leaf material on the side of the bin without the food, and notice I'm just pulling large chunks of uneaten um, slow food, um, you know, whether it be sticks or stones or avocado shells. So I, I'm going to just, as I fluff this part of the bin now, I'm going to be working through the uh, the leaf material that I just um, that I just added. And if I threw worms out the side, it isn't the first time when I do that. Uh, this is in our greenhouse, and they are happily um, finding their way to our garden underneath the greenhouse if they do end up on the floor. So it's we're outdoors in a unheated um, greenhouse and uh, and so the worms would be just fine that find their way they'll get into one of the many tubs of vegetables we have in here or outside the greenhouse into the garden so these are the stems from leaves even though we ran over them with the lawnmower they still persist and so this bin has because it's an outdoor bin it's had uh, leaf matter it's had manure and you can still see a few remnants of egg cartons and shredded cardboard. But you see how instantly the castings improve texture with the addition of this dusty uh, ground up dried leaves. And so I have no concerns at all now that I added a very moist feeding of pumpkin onto the other side. Um, these castings will not become muddy and I will be able to proceed with a harvest in a few weeks. And if this leaf matter has not broken down totally, first of all, I think it would be very hard to pick out some of this leaf matter from castings. Um, you know, it's gonna look almost identical. And secondly, um, doesn't really matter if there's unprocessed leaf matter in the castings. I'm gonna be sitting these castings if I harvest in a few weeks uh, out for at least a month or so to to let cocoons and whatnot hatch and um, and so any any residual leaf dust will just serve as as food for any worms uh, that whether they be babies or or you know that are in the existing material when I sift it or uh, they hatch in cocoons so if you were watching closely you saw a bit of lobster shell go by so there is still lobster in this worm bin. There's another little tiny bit of lobster shell. Very brittle. I just pushed it with my finger and, um, and it broke. Uh, so it's getting more increasingly br brittle. Good source of chitin for the worms and our garden, both of which need chitin. So uh, I'm happy that uh, that is gradually disappearing. Uh, I think because I, I do move worms around, uh, when I see a cluster of worms and I want another bin to finish, I do move clusters of worms from the bottom to the top, etc. Um, I can't guarantee, you know, which bin started with the lobster. And we've had lobster more than once, just treated ourselves over the summer so, last year. So I'm sure the, um, the lobster shells came from several meals. Anyway, that's what the bin looks like now that I've worked those uh, that powdery leaves into it and I will just migrate some of this right over top of the feeding area and uh, and it and it actually looks it in my you know 
uh, opinion, in, in really good shape uh, to, to keep the moisture level uh, great for the worms and not um, at risk at all of going muddy with the addition of the canned pumpkin. All right, that's teeny for this week. Bye, everyone.